In the late 90s and early 2000s, the music industry produced a kit called Build a Pop Star. This kit included blind, dancing, and contains generic bubblegum pop hits. Columbia bought this kit and turned out to be Jessica Simpson. Okay, that last segment was not to shade Simpson, but it goes to show you the state of the music industry of that time. Many labels find a blonde teenager, sign them, and play puppets to the label. This model was successful when Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera broke through, and many labels wanted to copy this formula. Columbia did this and they chose Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson is a singer who was around the new millennium, but over time she found other lanes in her career. So without further ado, this is what happened to Jessica Simpson. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Jessica Simpson was born on July 20th, 1980 in Abilene, Texas. Her mother was a homemaker and her father was a minister. She developed a love for music at an early age, and thanks to her father's ministry, she joined the church choir. This is how Jessica got her developing from. At the age of 12, she auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club. For her audition, she sang Amazing Grace and danced to Ice Ice Baby. According to Simpson, she got intimidated by Christina Aguilera, thus she did not get on the Mickey Mouse Club. So she returned to her father's church choir. After a failed attempt to get on Mickey Mouse Club, a label came calling called Proclaim Records, which was a Christian label. Jessica was going to release her self-titled album, but the label didn't push to release due to nature striking. Proclaim never released the album and they went bankrupt. It will be her grandmother who held a limited pressing event for the album. As Proclaim went under, her album was sent to multiple labels as she hoped to get signed. Then Tommy Matola came calling from Columbia. He wanted an artist different from Britney that could bring it vocally. Also, he stated that he didn't want Jessica to sell sex as she wanted her to be relatable to her listeners. So she signed with Columbia. What it cost was her high school life as she dropped out. She would later obtain her GED. She traveled to Orlando to record her debut album. Her mainstream debut will be called Sweet Kisses, released in 1999. Her first single was the ballad, I'm Gonna Love You Forever, and that went to number three on the Hot 100. The next single was Where You Are, and there she teamed up with 98 Degrees member Nick Lachey. While it wasn't a big hit like her debut, it did start a relationship with Nick. Wait a minute, popular boy band member hooking up with a rising female pop star? Coincidence? Anyway, her third single was I Think I'm In Love With You, which uses the Jack and Diane sample by John Mellicham. The song only reached number 21 on the Hot 100, but it did reach the top 10 in Australia and Canada and the video became her first hit on TRL, going number 5 there. Sweet Kisses went double platinum. To promote, she became the opening act for 98 Degrees on their tour. But during this time, she got caught in her first big scandal. It should be noted that when she was younger, her father gave her a purity ring and promised not to have sex until marriage. She will often be asked about her virginity and that story blew up so much the label used it for marketing. It was said she lost her purity ring by mistake while opening for Ricky Martin and while guest starring on the That 70s Show, she played a virgin. For her second album, she wanted a more mature image with more pop friendly radio hits, something she was against earlier. She also ended her relationship with Nick Lachey. The result will be Irresistible, released in May 2001. The title track was the lead single but many critics were concerned of the sexual image change. But the song peaked at number 13 on the Hot 100. To promote Irresistible, she was booked on the TRL tour alongside Destiny's Child, 3LW, Eve, and Nelly. The second single was A Little Bit, but that single flopped. 9 11 might have something to do with that, but we can't confirm or deny it. But Jessica Simpson's follow up album went gold. After this, she rekindled her relationship with Nick Lachey and got engaged in 2002. They will marry later that year and get their own MTV reality show, Newlyweds, Nick and Jessica. Fun fact, Newlyweds was supposed to be a Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley show, but the idea was shelved. On the show, Jessica was told to dumb down her personality to fit the dumb blonde stereotype. 
Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken by the sea. <laughs> she said the show was a good idea to give her promo for the next album. That next album was In Your Skin, released in August 2003. The first single was With You, and that peaked at number 14 on the Hot 100. Her next single was Take My Breath Away, which is a direct cover of the Berlin classic, and that peaked at number 20 on the Hot 100. Take my breath away. In Your Skin became Jessica Simpson's highest selling album, mostly thanks to the show, going triple platinum. In February 2004, she appeared at the halftime show of Super Bowl 38 alongside Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake, Kid Rock, Nelly, again, and P. Diddy. And yes, for the 923rd time, this was the show that inspired this lovely platform. In 2005, Jessica started to venture outside of music. That same year, she made her acting debut on the film Dukes of Hazard as Daisy Dukes. The film was met with negative reviews despite being a box office success. To promote the film, she released her cover of These Boots Are Made For Walking, originally sung by Nancy Sinatra. The song peaked at number 14 on the Hot 100 as the cover was produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and featured Willie Nelson. These boots are made for walking, that's just what they'll do. But the song became more known for the video. There was a scene where she was washing the cart wearing a bikini and she shared a kiss with Willie Nelson. And because of this, the video was banned in several countries. Meanwhile, her marriage with Nick Lachey was on the rocks. First, the reality show ended in December that year. She filed for divorce with Nick Lachey, citing irreconcilable differences. The divorce was finalized in June 2006, but it ended up costing her a lot. Because she didn't sign a prenup before their marriage, she had to pay $12 million in the settlement. And today, she claimed that this was her biggest financial mistake in her career. This was not the only divorce Jessica had. She also parted ways with Columbia, signing a new deal with Epic. She released her fourth album, A Public Affair. The lead-off title single used the Ain't No Mountain High Enough and Holiday sample as it peaked at number 14 on the Hot 100. But the album failed to generate other singles as it only went gold. She will have a fling with John Mayer, but it didn't last long. Then, in 2007, she was seen dating Dallas Cowboy quarterback Tony Romo. Romo, who was having a successful year to that point, started to regress in play. In a Week 15 game against the Eagles, she appeared wearing a pink number 9 jersey. The Cowboys lost 10-6, just their second of the season. After the regular season wrapped, the Cowboys were 13-3, their best record since they won the Super Bowl in 1995 and was the number one seed. Since they were a number one seed, the couple was spotted in Cabo, Mexico on vacation. Their first playoff game, the Cowboys lost to the NFC East rival and eventual Super Bowl champion New York Giants. Many fans blamed Jessica Simpson for Romo's regression and dubbing her as Yoko Romo. It's my team. It's my quarterback. For her next album, Jessica Simpson decided to leave pop and venture into country. That sixth album would be called Do You Know? It had one single come on over, but it only peaked at number 65 on the Hot 100 and number 18 on the country charts. I need you now. I need you back. The fans did not receive the song well or the album, and she ended up a target by Eminem who called her out on his song and video, We Made You. Jessica Simpson, sing the chorus. When you walk through the door, it was she became the opening act for Rascal Flatts on their tour, but that same year, her relationship with Tony Romo came to an end. Jessica Simpson's personal life did reach a settlement. She dated former 49ers tight end Eric Johnson. Wait a minute, tight end dating a pop star? Have we heard this story before? But anyway, the couple got married in 2014 and shared three children. While her music career died down, she found other ways to make money. Back in 2005, she started the Jessica Simpson Collection. By 2010, the company earned $750 million in revenue and it reached $1 billion in revenue in 2015. In 2010, she took part of a docuseries called The Price of Beauty where she traveled around the world to explore other countries' fashion types. In 2012, she became a spokesperson for Weight Watchers, something that she struggled throughout her career 
In 2020, she released her memoir, Open Book, where she highlights her past relationship, weight troubles, among other hidden dark secrets. In 2023, Jessica announced she planned on releasing a new album and go on tour the following year. Through it all, even though her music isn't her primary focus these days, Jessica Simpson has found her way. And that pretty much is what Jessica Simpson's been up to today. So tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.